that sticky piece of crap. I think I'll steam mess of a plant. <laughs> Welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I will be your host. And uh, I'm trying to clear out the clutter. And I've got a lot of clutter going on in here. And it's my own doing. It's my own fault. I wanted this uh, passion fruit vine to, uh, by the way, passion fruit is a tropical plant, I believe. I had this uh, plant growing here for quite some time. And it grew out of a pot way back here, and it grew up all over the place. It was really beautiful. It's a beautiful plant, um, passion fruit vines. But what I found out from experience is that they rain on your head. Yeah, they do. And uh, this thing was going all over the place. It was taking over the voodoo garden. And I'm standing around, clipping my plants, watering my plants, having a good time, going about my business, and uh, minding my own business, mind you. And this thing is dripping little drops all over my head, my fingers, my face, everything. And it's it's the consistency of uh, syrup, you know, pancake syrup. And I really don't like that. So uh, I thought, you know what? I don't need this thing raining all over my head. So what I did the other day is I repotted this. I cut all the vines. Remember all the vines were growing out like this? Well, I cut all the vines off uh, at the plant and then I took the plant out trimmed the roots down to where it was smaller so I could fit it in a smaller pot and I planted it in a smaller pot and that's what it's doing right now. It's way back there. Actually, I should probably show you instead of just telling you since you don't know what I'm talking about unless I actually show you. This sticky, nasty mess. Oh, you got to see this. Check this out. <laughs> oh, it it kind of looks like a spider web. By the way, this is not a spider web. No, this is the sticky goo that comes out of this plant. And it's horrible. It's all over the place. What I did was I pulled the plant out, trimmed the roots, and put it in a smaller pot. It was in a pot about four times this size. So I trimmed the roots so it fit in a smaller pot. I pruned it back. And it's already after just a few days. I don't know if it'll show, but right here. There's a little teeny tiny sprout coming. You can probably see fungus gnats all over the place. Yep, we're having a fungus gnat kind of spring here in the Voodoo Garden. But this is the passion fruit plant. Oh, and here's what I'm talking about. If you ever see this, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't be tempted to touch it. See that little droplet of liquid? Yeah, there's a little droplet of liquid there. That's the dew or honeydew or syrup or... Ugh. It's whatever it is. It's nasty, and it you touch it, and it goes all over the place, and you can't wash this stuff off very easily. Yeah. Mm. Just stay back there. Mind your own business. I'll mind mine. Yeah, I'm having a fungus gnat attack in here, and uh, at first, you know, I go crazy, and I think, what am I doing wrong? And I'm looking around, trying to find the culprit and stuff, and then it hits me. I don't know why it never hit me before. Um, I don't know. Maybe I was ducking and dodging. But what happened is this spring, when uh, springs, oh, when the, the soil started uh, thawing out outside and the compost and everything, I noticed there were gnats all over the place. And they were upstairs too. And that's totally closed off from the voodoo garden. And they were coming into the house. And uh, these are fungus gnats. Uh, it turns out fungus gnats aren't just in our indoor grow room. Of course, they come from the wild. And I have wild fungus gnats all over my property. So uh, they're not actually originating in the voodoo garden. They're coming into the voodoo garden. Every time I open up the door, I'm probably getting a few fungus gnats in here. Well, they're kind of feeding my predatory mites, but the mites can't keep up. So I decided I'm not going to worry about it. Eventually, when uh, summer comes along and the fungus gnats are no longer a big deal, everything will find its own balance. But for right now, this sticky trap has got to go. You know, this is probably catching fungus gnats. I was just thinking about that just now. All this stickiness is probably catching fungus gnats because nothing can escape this sticky, nasty mess. Ugh. Plus, I need to get rid of some of these plants. I, got, uh, I have this pattern. And I've always had this pattern. I grow a plant, well, you know, the, the spider plant. I grew it, it was big, it was beautiful, it had babies, and it pretty much reached the end of what this plant is gonna do. So I was kind of wondering, what do, where do I go from now? And, uh-oh, uh careful now. This thing is strong. It'll pull things off the wall with those little tendrils. Look at that. Holy Moses. Leo! Clingy. Ugh. 
But anyway, um, the spider plant, it got big and beautiful, had babies, and uh, I didn't know where to go from there because it was slowly starting to fade because it was taking care of too many babies. So what I did was I cut all the babies off and got rid of them. And I know people are screaming at me right now, but I don't care. I have enough of the babies up on these little pots up here that I can start all over again. So I thought, well, why do I have the mama plant anymore? So uh, I'm taking the mama plant and I'm going to go toss it out by the uh, wood pile and let it grow in the spring and grow outside. Because spider plants can grow outside, they just can't live forever outside. But I don't need it here in the voodoo garden taking up valuable space because, let's face it, this is not a big room. And I need the room for other plants. And I've had my fun. The spider plant was a fun plant to grow, but it's time to move on. And uh, that's not a popular view for, uh, for a lot of my viewers. But when I get a, a really nice, big, beautiful plant, they want to see it for a while. And, uh, but I get kind of tired of seeing the same plant every single day, especially when it's already pretty much reached the maximum of what it, it's going to do. So I go on to something new. And uh, the spider plant, it was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a wonderful thing, and it was a great gift from somebody. But I have babies, so I'm doing just fine. Same thing goes for the coleus. Remember I had this big beautiful coleus? Well, I took the coleus and I took a little cutting. See? A little cutting. And I started it in a little cup. Now I'm going to have a new coleus. So I'm starting over from scratch. I like the process and I like starting over from scratch and the journey. And by the way, I did take a cutting of the uh, monster here, the passion fruit. And so if this one down here doesn't do well, I have one here. I do want to continue growing it, I just don't want it to really take over and dominate the room because then it's just one big thing that takes up a lot of real estate and I like to have a whole bunch of different things going on. Same thing with my coffee tree. You guys probably didn't even know I had a coffee tree. Many, many years ago, back in my old house, I had, I think it was called a Robusto or I don't know what it was called. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't put a tag on it. But it was a coffee tree I grew from a bean that I ordered online. And it grew really nice and, and then it stopped growing. It just kind of sat there and looked like a coffee tree. And then I got tired of looking at it. So I took a clipping, hit it with rooting hormone, got it in a cup over here. So I'm starting over from scratch. I wanted to show you this. You got to see this. <laughs> I like showing this plant. Take a look at this. This is that eggplant. I've been showing it on a few episodes. It's supposed to go outside, but I'm trying to keep it alive until it's time to go outside. But it just decided, I haven't even pruned this back. Look at all the new uh, suckers coming out of the sides. But uh, yeah, I've, I've grown eggplant before, but I've never had it with leaves this big. I can't really figure out what's going right with this. Look at that compared to my hand. Yeah, that's, that's a big stinking leaf. This is going to be a beauty this year. And oh, hey, look. Um, uh, which way do I turn this? Look, it's getting little eggplant thingies, uh, uh, flowers. <laughs> I'm kind of scatterbrained today. Son of a gun! I'm going to have eggplants before I take them outside. Wonderful. And I got my trees blooming, and uh, I haven't showed you those. Uh, somebody sent me, um, uh, oh, this isn't even a tree, this is a bush. This is blueberry. Yeah, somebody sent me some sticks, some bare root stock, and I planted it in pots, and I have a blueberry growing inside. This was actually nothing but a stick when I first got it. Yep, see? Nothing much to see, but it started growing about a week or so ago, all of this green stuff. It came out of hibernation, and I really don't know what I'm doing because I've never grown a blueberry very long indoors, so I have no idea what's going on with that. I got to get rid of some of these plants. They're getting a little bit too big. This one is a beauty. This is that weird thing, and I forgot what I, its name was. Somebody told me what it was, and it just sat here, and it sat here, and then all of a sudden, it just went crazy, and it started putting out new leaves. Same thing with the prayer plant. This philodendron I put into a bigger pot. I got this, uh, I think it was for two bucks. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I got it for two bucks, and uh, I got it in a little six-inch pot, and then I put it in this big old pot. It's kind of heavy. And it started growing recently. I got a feeling, I got a feeling by the end of summer, this thing's going to hit the ceiling. And it's a good thing I'm getting rid of a lot of this stuff because I want to make room for the new things and give them a little bit of time in the voodoo garden. You know, everybody has to have their chance. And I don't want one particular plant to dominate all of my time and all of my space. It's kind of like a standing room only in here. I don't, you know, if I fall, Okay, maybe I won't fall. But anyway, 
Yeah, I gotta get these. I gotta get these tomatoes out. I got, you know, I got the tomatoes. You've seen the tomatoes. This is Boxcar Willie. Yeah, Boxcar all over the place is what it is. This thing I was growing since uh, it was a little sprout, and I was pruning it back and I was pruning it back. And you know, my uh, indoor tomatoes don't ever look fantastic, but they do grow. My outdoor tomatoes, they look fantastic. But this is the beginning stock of it. Look at that. I'm, I'm working on developing these stems. Let me see if I can hold this with one hand and demonstrate with the other one. Look at the size of this stem. This has never been outside. This is what I'm talking about, developing the good strong stems that are going to be buried and root this spring. Yep. So planting time is about a month away, folks. A month away. Boy, am I biting at the bit. Can't wait to get these things out of here. And the pepper plants, come on over here. Uh, come on over here and say howdy. Don't be shy. Which one is this one? This one is called elephant ear. Yeah. Come on over and see this one. This is elephant ear. Nothing spectacular, but it's a decent size. I grew this from seed. This is supposed to put out big, beautiful, delicious sweet peppers. And of course, it is putting out these little flower buds, and I keep picking them off as fast as they're putting them out. But it really does want a flower, but I just can't let it do that. This is the right size pot for growing it indoors until it's ready to go outside. If the pot was any bigger, I wouldn't be able to maneuver it in order to transplant it without you know, messing it up. And if the pot was any smaller, it would get really, really root bound. So I don't want that either. If you have a root bound plant, it's really kind of stressful on it. And especially when you transplant, it's harder for a root bound plant to take root outside. You got to keep those roots loose and a smaller pot just isn't going to do it. And once again, once again, I am growing avocado. I'm really happy about this too. Avocado. Yeah, it's not much of a plant, but then again, it wasn't much of a pit. This pit was about the size of an almond when I got it out of the avocado. I thought, no, there's no way this thing's going to grow. I threw it in the cup. I waited a couple months and look, you yeah, know, it's going good. Don't know if it's going to do very well. You know, I have a horrible track record when it comes to avocados. They sprout, they grow really good. And then all of a sudden their leaves just start dying off. And I don't know why it is. And so many people, they, they message me and they say, Ray, why is my avocado dying? I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe it visited my house. My avocados don't do very well. I don't know what it is. My grandmother, who's Mexican, she passed away years and years ago. But I remember when I was a little kid, grandma always had this avocado plant growing up all spindly in the corner of her dark apartment in the kitchen. And uh, I remembered that. And that's why I like to grow avocados, because it reminds me of grandma. But uh, hers never died. I mean, I was a little kid and then I grew up to be an adult and I moved away from town when I was like 19 years old. All of those years I grew up, that same avocado tree was there and grandma would give it a little water every now and then. I don't know, maybe I'm over spoiling my plants, but she just basically didn't give it any care at all and it grew fine. I give it the best care I can possibly figure out. Darn thing goes and dies on me. I don't get it. I got to get the rest of these vines out of here. I got things to do. Oh, see? <laughs> it had a hole of this. These little vine things, they grab onto stuff. And you know what? I've been thinking about it. I don't know what this is, but it's this little thing that somebody gave me from the Philippines. It was a gift sent to me by a viewer. And I love this because it's made, I think, out of either bamboo or some kind of grass. Check it out. On the back it says, To Ray, Happy Holidays from Anjanette and Russell. Huh. Ah, neat, huh? Yeah, it's kind of beautiful. Actually, it is beautiful. And uh, it would have been even more beautiful if it hadn't have fallen off the wall. Now i got to figure out how to put this thing back up. Okay. And... Don't move. Don't move. Take a look at this. It's just kind of a weird chaos thing going over here. There's no rhyme or reason to this side of the grow room. But look at this. This is what I wanted to show you. This is my dragon fruit. And uh, it's a vining cactus. Yes, it's a vining cactus, folks. But this is what it's been doing recently. And uh, it's been keep competing uh, with a passion fruit for space. And it's vining all over the place. All of these vines right here are coming off of one plant. And all of these other ones over here are coming off of one plant. And they're going a little nuts. And you know what the sad thing about it is? I started out with a pot, only this big. This is uh, generally designed 
for just hanging flowers. Yeah, but I used it for a dragon fruit because I really didn't assume that it would get so big. I underestimated this thing. And it just keeps going nuts. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to just tear it all off, take the best looking piece that I can, and it might just be this one right here with all the side roots coming out. I'm going to bury that sucker deep in a big pot and then give it the best possible start I can. That way it'll, it'll clear up this space over here and get rid of all of those you know, uh, halfway looking vines that aren't going to really do much. And I'll have one strong plant growing out of a big pot. Maybe I can get myself some fruit doing that. Somebody told me, Ray, you'll never get fruit if you grow it inside. And you know me, I took that as a personal challenge. So I'm going to do something with this and re redo it, rework it, re rewire it, and get it growing underneath some good lights and some good soil in a nice deep pot where I can really root down. I'm going to see if I can get me some fruit on that because if I can, it will make me feel good about myself that I can actually get one of these things to fruit inside when it's not supposed to. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like that. I'll screw these lights back in. It'll be nice and bright here. I won't have weird honey dripping all over my head. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty cool. And then I got to get rid of this and then repot that. But I don't have any potting soil. I got to go to the store and get potting soil. Thing is, every time I go to the store, I want to bring home plants. So you never know what you're going to find here next week. I could have a couple cherry trees growing here in the Voodoo Garden. I don't know. I'm, I should just leave my wallet at home. I think that's probably the smartest thing. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining me in the Voodoo Garden. Until next time, I'm out of here. And um, yeah, so this sticky, nasty. Oh, I need to wash my hands. This is gross.